how much we should know about the motor to be a good machine design engineer. It's debatable. So hey there, this is Ayusha and today we will learn how to choose the right motor for a particular application or a particular machine or simply which type of motor is best or better for which application. In this video, we will cover most used motor in machine design like induction motor, stepper motor and servo motor. And this video is going to be a form of mechanical design engineer perspective. So rather than going in depth of electrical motor working principle, we will mainly try to focus on motor applications and their specific feature. And end of the video, we will also conclude that why motor selection should be done by a mechanical design engineer, not by an electrical design engineer. So if you are an electrical nerd, maybe this video will not helpful for you. So first of all, what is the motor? What is an electrical motor? We can say an electrical motor is a device or actuator which converts the electrical energy into a motion or a movement. Also, the motion can be rotary or it can be linear. Also, there can be a pneumatic motor use compressed air as an energy to do the motion and movement. Same, there can be a hydraulic motor, use hydraulic pressure to do the motion and movement. We can say IC engine is also a motor, use fuels to do the motion and movement. So let's start with most popular motor, AC induction motor, asynchronous motor. So is that a induction motor or asynchronous motor the same? Well, we can say this motor is same. But first, I want you to understand the logic behind motor names, so it will be more clear to you. So that generally, motor names is based on their operating principle and their specific features. For example, the induction, to be exact, electromagnetic induction is an operating principle of motor. And the term asynchronous is kind of feature. If the motor rotor speed is precisely synchronized with motor stator rotating magnetic field, we can say it's a synchronized motor. And if the motor rotor speed is not exactly synchronized with the stator rotating magnetic field, means if there is a slip, we can call it asynchronous motor. I hope you get my point without going to detail. Also, motor can be AC operated or DC operated. Also, the motor can be three phase or motor can be single phase. So we can call it three phase AC induction motor. And you might be surprised, the servo motor is actually a not name of a specific motor. The term servo is a feature. The motor which can be precisely controlled in a closed loop, we can call it servo motor. So there can be AC servo motor or there can be DC servo motor if the motor is DC operated. So when we say the name of motor, it's actually not a specific picture of the motor. The name is related to the type of the motor, the feature of the motor or we can say the class of the motor like this is also a servo motor and this is also a servo motor both looks completely different but these both are servo motor because these both motors have a servo feature i guess now it's completely clear so let's back to the first motor ac induction motor and this is the one of most popular motor 90 percent of industrial motor are induction motor why? Because we can use this motor in almost all type of general applications like conveyors, blowers, compressor, hydraulic pumps, water pumps, industrial fan and there is unlimited applications. We can use this motor where we just need the motion at particular speed where no specific control is required where we just have to start and stop the motor after work is done. And now let's look at some pores and cons of this motor. And the first pores of this motor is the simple design. And because of the simple design its cost is low as well as its maintenance is also minimal and their life is like more than any other motors and the speed we can get at the 50 hertz are 3000 rpm 1500 rpm 1000 rpm and 750 rpm according to the numbers of pole and we have already talked about the numbers of pole in last video 
I will leave the link in description. And the AC induction motor power can be quarter HP to thousands HP. And there is a thing, we can only get the rated torque at rated speed of induction motor. And this leads us to some cons of this motor. And the first cons is the speed control. We can control the speed of induction motor using VMD but we will not get the rated torque of the motor at a specific speeds. Means if we will decrease the speed of motor by decreasing VFD frequency with speed torque will also decrease. Because when VFD decreases the frequency voltage supply also decreases. So whenever we need to increase or decrease the speed or torque, we can use the gearbox, reduction gearbox to increase the torque and reduce the speed. And the second cons of this motor is we cannot stop the motor immediately. If we will power up the motor, motor will keep rotating up to certain degree because of moment of inertia. Also we cannot stop the motor when power is on means we cannot use this motor where we need to stop the motion. Applications like pilot conveyor where we need accurate positioning, we cannot use this motor. Applications like induction table, we cannot use this motor with simple gearbox. We have to have use the indexing gearbox. I hope you get my point. And the third cons is the speed of this motor is dependent on load over motor. So whenever load over induction motor will increase, the speed will be decreased. And to overcome from this problem, this lead us to second type of motor, AC synchronous motor. And the main advantage of AC synchronous motor is the fixed speed. AC synchronous motor speed keep constant and precise over fluctuation of load. Also, AC synchronous motor can provide high torque at low speed as compared to AC induction motor. And mainly we use the AC synchronous motor where we need the fixed speed, precise speed. And their maximum speed is same like AC induction motor, 3000 rpm. But this motor cannot provide the high torque like AC induction motor. But their torque will be constant as compared to AC induction motor. And their applications are limited. For example, in printing machines, some CNC machines, and this motor is used for power factor correction for electrical system. Also this motor is used in a specific pumps where constant flow is required. And their cones are their complex design. Synchronous motor is a double excited motor. Need both type of electrical supply AC and DC to operate. And also their cost is high and maintenance is high. So you will not see this motor so often. But what if, if we not only need the precise speed, we also need precise control over positioning, control over immediate start and immediate stop, and sometimes just to hold the movement. So for this, there is two type of motors. One, the stepper motor, and second is the servo motor. And these two motors are different from other motors in terms of operation. These two motors operate on pulses, electrical pulses, from their own drive or PLC or microcontroller, apart from main power supply. They also need AC or DC power supply. We cannot operate these two motors without PLC or microcontroller. But maybe some electrical nerd can be operate this motor without driver. So let's first start with a stepper motor. So as the name is a stepper, so this motor rotates in steps like a clock. And as we will give the pulses, this motor will rotate in steps accordingly. And more pulses, more rotation. Without any feedback loop, there is no encoder in a stepper motor. Encoders measure the rotational speed or angle. So their design is simple. Tooth rotor design and cost is low. And we can specify the stepper motor accuracy in terms of steps. Stepper's motors comes with a step of 1.8 degree, means 200 steps in one revolution. And a step of 0.9 degree, means 400 steps in one revolution. 
and their applications are where we need moderate position accuracy because a stepper motor will not give you the feedback that how much motor we rotate how much the motor travel also where the high speed and high torque is not required because a stepper motor maximum speed can be up to 800 or 900 rpm and in general commercial stepper motor we can get the maximum torque between 10 to 20 newton meter and of course you can add some sensor with a stepper motor to get the feedback also some stepper motor manufacturers provide inbuilt feedback feature with a stepper motor but always remember the stepper motor resolution is fixed and we can use the stepper motor in applications like 3d printer and for the light indexing mechanism, movie production camera system, printer, a scanner, but we should avoid the stepper motor in heavy precise control machine. Because there is one more disadvantage of this motor apart from lack of feedback and low speed and low torque. And this advantage is this, when we increase the speed of a stepper motor, the torque will be declined something like this so how to overcome from this problem the answer is servo motor servo motor is designed for precisely control the position speed and torque in a closed loop feedback servo motor operating principle is different from a stepper motor servo motors manage their running accuracy with its inbuilt sensors like encoder and resolvable feedback and servo motor rotational resolution not depend on motor operating mechanism which can be permanent magnet rotor magnetic field or dc motor but it's all depend on servo motor encoder resolution and resolver accuracy suppose servo motor encoder is 17 bit 17 binary digits 0 and 1 means encoder can distinguish between 2 per power 17 this much unique position and if servo motor encoder is 24 bits means encoder can count 2 per power 24 this much unique position and count and if you want this accuracy in angle just divide this value by 360 degree and this will become 0 0.000214 degree could you imagine that how small is this number? Let's say if you want to rotate the servo motor with this a small angle per second like a clock, take one step in one second. So the servo motor will take one rotation in this much second and this much second will be equal to six month. Interesting? Means we can get the minimum speed as much we want. Also, we can stop the movement of mechanical system using servo motor up to their holding torque. And the maximum speed we can get in general industrial servo motor is 6000 rpm. And there is nothing to specify the torque because the torque of the servo motor is depend on the type of servo motor. But in general commercial industrial servo motor, we can easily get the maximum torque range between 100 to 200 Newton meter. But the main thing is their torque versus speed graph. The torque will not decline in changing of a speed up to rated a speed, even at the zero speed. And the servo motors comes with two different type of encoders. One, the incremental encoder servo motor. And this motor provides their live position feedback on the basis of reference position and we can call it home position and the home sensor is mandatory for this type of servo motor and the second type of servo motor is the absolute encoder servo motor and this type of motors provide actual position absolute position without any reference and the home sensor is not mandatory for this type of servo motor and there are also many advantage of servo motor apart from closed loop high accuracy position controls like high dynamic performance, high repeatability, high density torque, wide range of speed, fast response, 
So should we use the servo motor for every application because every feature is on high? Answer is no because servo motor is costly. This motor is needs a dedicated servo driver as well and their cost will be approximate same to the servo motor or maybe more than the servo motor. So where we should use the servo motor? We should definitely use the servo motor where we actually need the high precision control like in robotics design, CNC machines, in some special purpose machines where we actually need it, medical equipments like robotic surgery equipments, aeroplane control surface because in aeroplanes the feedback loop is the most important. In ADAS, automatic drive assistance system, radar system, and there is many more applications. So just for a quick recap, selection of motor. For selection of motor type, first of all, list down the required feature of your system like positioning feature, motion holding feature, required response time, repeatability accuracy, and environment conditions. And on the basis of these feature requirements, make the selection of motor type and then select the specific size of motor as per machine required torque, speed and accuracy. Whatever your mechanical system is like ball screw, gearbox, timing belt, anything. Because we cannot make the selection of motor without knowing our system, without knowing our required parameters. Even though first try to minimize the required accuracy, required torque or speed by changing or improving the mechanical system to meet the general motor specification to save the cost. For example, suppose we are using a stepper motor with ball screw and the stepper motor resolution is 1.8 degree and the ball screw lead is 10 mm means when the stepper motor will rotate complete one revolution 360 degree the ball screw nut will travel 10 mm so one degree of rotation will be 10 divided by 360 degree so 1.8 degree will be 0.05 mm means the system linear resolution is 50 micron and what if we change the ball screw lead to 5 mm then we will get the linear resolution 25 micron the double position accuracy and my point is here we just double the accuracy just by changing in parameters of mechanical system with the same motor with the same stepper motor and this is how we can save the cost for high accuracy motor and this is why in machine design, motor selection should be done by a mechanical design engineer. Same in case of sensor selection for a machine, mechanical design engineer can do better selection. Because nobody can understand the requirement of the machine, the function of the machine better than us, better than mechanical design engineer. Anyway, let's complete this video with some clear cut and debatable debatable statement for the general applications where no control needed just motion is needed select induction motor and to adjust the speed and torque use the appropriate ratio of gearbox only when precise and fixed speed is needed select synchronous motor but also keep in mind that you can always choose the stepper motor over synchronous motor if the speed and torque requirement is low and you can choose the servo motor if the torque and speed are high because these two motors will also provide the constant speed and when the required position accuracy speed and torque is low mostly in diy application select a stepper motor and if the high dynamic control and performance are needed select servo motor also the servo motor is a high torque density motor means servo motor can provide high torque in compact size servo motor cost is high but it's a good investment in machine for reliability and this is it for the first part of this series i hope i did my best and the second part of this series like bldc motor hysteris brake motor or maybe dynometer will take time it's also depend on your demand so for now the next video is coming on gearbox selections 
Oh my god, I'm working for you. Thank you so much for the watching.